What's going on people? Welcome to the Bermondsey channel if you're new here. For those who've been following me know I've caught a lot of Serbia videos of late. And in one of the videos I was very fortunate to visit the Red Star and Partizan Belgrade stadiums. The link to that video is in the description down below. Go check it out. Today's video is going to be more reaction to the most intense atmosphere in football. Partizan vs Red Star Belgrade football documentary made by Copper 90. So go grab yourself a drink, sit back relax and without further ado let's fire this bad boy up. These are the games that create an atmosphere like no other. These are the games that can make a war zone of a city. These are Derby Days. Tackle. All right, so this is it, the last of our Derby Days trips. And if I'm perfectly honest, it's probably the fixture that I've been worrying about the most. However, this is also the fixture I've most been looking forward to. I mean, I'm always going on about active support and how I believe it plays the most important role in football. Well, the fans here in Belgrade are about as active as supporters can be. Look at that. It's partisan, it's Red Star, it's the eternal derby. The Belgrade derby is one of the most special, unique, football games in the world. It's part of you, it defines you. Your whole city and whole country is speaking only about football. It's one of the things that defines a city. The clubs are so important to the identity of the city. Pa dobro, ovde ovde cela nedelja pred derbi se osjeća velika i na ulici u kafićima u svuda je prisutna ta atmosfera pred derbi. The whole country stops and watches the game. And if you want to experience the atmosphere in the city properly, <laughs> you need to see uh, the derby game. U karijeri sam igrao još jedan derbi u Italiji između Genova i Sampdorije i tamo isto vruć derbi navijači su fenomenalni, ali mislim da 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 je ovo jedan od posljednjih derbija gdje su navijači tako vrući kao 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 ovdje u Beogradu. Sport was always a way to to just exert your your stresses uh, to exert your passion, you know, to show to have a break from everyday life because it's not easy here. People don't have money. People can travel, people don't have what to do else just to go to the football. So the, your, your average 14-year-old, 15-year-old, 16-year-old, when, when it comes to Derby Day, for them that's it. That's that day that they've been waiting for. That's that day to scream the loudest, to shout the loudest, to show why you're better than the opposition. They release their tensions. Yeah, yeah. Too that's many tensions around in normal life, so you need some place where you can uh, expel that tension. And that's what I think just is the magic about football. You forget about life for 90 minutes. And in Belgrade, that's where it's special. This match is notorious the world over for the behaviour of its fans, and I want to find out just how much of this reputation is justified and what attending the Belgrade derby is really like. Pa ja mogu da samo jedno da kažem da su naši najvećiji najbolji na svetu i mislim da su najvećiji na svetu. Yeah, definitely both both teams have very good support. This part of the Europe have a lots of passion. Greeks are passionate nation. Serbs are a passionate nation. This is Balkan and here is everything broken, so we are a little special in terms of that. This part of the Europe is uh, uh, people with uh, warm blood. Two big clubs and the same, same place, they, that's the reason why they, they are always sneeze, fighting between them, who is best. In the 80s, the people didn't hate so much, like, but now it's crazy. <laughs> the clubs that drive these two sets of supporters so crazy were formed in the aftermath of the Second World War, when the communist president Tito took over the country. Both clubs um, were established in, on the ashes uh, of this country after World War II. Uh, the partisan was established by a group of young uh, Yugoslav army officers, the veterans of the Spanish Civil War, who've fought fascism in Spain and then they've beaten Nazis here. Partizan was a team of uh, army and uh, Red Star was being a team of, of uh, policy. Uh, for Partizan it's like they represent army and for Red Star there is a story they represent the police. But in the urban, the other legend says that uh, Red Star was the people's club and like some kind of the re reaction to the communism because people didn't like communism and they wanted to have something on their own. Youth of uh, Belgrade said, okay, we must have a club. Let us found some club. 
So that was the day of 4 March 1945, and it exists from that days, and everything else is history. Despite great success in the intervening years, including a European Cup win for Red Star in 1991, today the clubs are almost better known for the fans' behaviour off the pitch than the players' exploits on it. Unfortunately, the picture that uh, we are sending to the world, to the Europe, and uh, not, on, not the picture of good football, not the picture of great goals, but the picture of violent scenes. I think it is because of the situation in country. After the war, everyone were unpleasant and full of, of hate and uh, they needed something to, to release themselves, to, to go somewhere and shout and <laughs> to fight. There are incidents, of course, uh, on the way uh, to the stadium on match days, uh, the fans getting skirmishes or something, but uh, those are the fans who really like that sort of thing. I don't like collectivity uh, guilt. I like personal guilt. I make uh, something bad, I'm guilty. Not all of us. One of the problems I've had when looking into this derby is that when you start reading up on the ultras, it doesn't take long before you come across some pretty disturbing stories and accusations. But I refuse to accept that that's all there is to it. I want to find out how representative these violent elements are and see what else is driving the incredible passion of this derby. I can't say that the reputation is entirely unjustified. It's somewhat fair, but uh, I think uh, it's not as bad as people think. Yeah, there has been violence. I have seen violence. I have had some small missiles thrown at me by, by Red Star fans when I was ex exiting uh, a game. But for the most part, no. That's why when people come over from, from abroad, initially they might be, you know, they have that kind of negative perspective. The spin of the Western media has been, you know, Eastern Europe, it's dangerous, you know, after the England game, you know, apparent racism. People love people coming here, whether you're black, Asian, Indian. When you come here, you're going to be welcomed with a big heart. People want to show you that it isn't true what you, you know, might see in the media. I Just pause it there. Um, what they're saying about the Western media and stuff, to be honest with you, I haven't really experienced that. I, I, you know, before I come to Serbia, I've had no uh, premonition, no uh, idea beforehand what Serbia was like. Or you know, regarding football, I've always wanted to go to the derby, the eternal derby. I really want to see that game. But yeah, regards to Western media uh, putting uh, Serbia in a bad light or the football in a bad light. I've never seen that personally, so I go into a, a country with my eyes wide open and to be honest with you, I met uh, Red Star fans, Partisan fans and uh, like the guy said there, I felt you know nothing but warmth off people and that's why I'm excited to go back to Serbia again. I think that there's, there's much more to this rivalry than just, just violence. I feel it's fantastic because uh, people here, fans here, sing all the time, all 90 minutes. Every one of your senses will be completely alive. People here feel like they've been hard done by, you know? They, they haven't had the opportunity to show a positive light. They haven't had the opportunity to, to show the world that, you know, we, we can, we are a good people. It's, it's not all bad. Certainly, as far as partisan fans are concerned, they're proud of who they are. They're proud of being grubbery and, uh, and, and you know, they'll, they'll relish the chance to show you what they can do. There's always like a concentration on this negative, negative. But when you see, you're going to see the colour, you're going to see the, when they pick, pick up the tifos, you know? I need the to go to this derby. The colour. They're going to be coloured in, in noise and passion and it's, it's going to be brilliant, man. I can't wait. It really seems as though the stories I heard before coming out here are by no means the be all and end all of the eternal derby. However, I am still a little apprehensive about game day itself. Expect to see some things that you probably haven't seen in England for a while. I think on the Derby Day, lots of tension is around the city because too many police on every corner is police standing. Not only normal police, but robo cops. <laughs> You're dead. That's like in England. Uh, with football in the 80s in England, well, 70s and 80s, there was a lot of trouble. But now in England, if there's any trouble, you get a ban for life. So. The trouble is curtailed really. Where I live in Birmingham, you've got Aston Villa and Birmingham City and those fans absolutely hate each other and when when those two teams get together, the police presence, it's just, you know, <laughs> it's not going to happen. There's, there's no, there's going to be no trouble. There's no love loss between those two sets of fans and if, if, they, if the police wasn't there, then it would just be bedlam. Definitely going to have something they call a bacleada. A is when you just throw as many players as possible. 
after a goal goes in. So, uh, outside the stadium, we're taking our cameras now. What do you think? Mm, I, I don't think it's so smart because around the stadium, people here have bad experience from the past and they don't like to be recorded. Yeah. They really don't like to be recorded because of all the stories they were connected before with the politics around football. I mean, what, what, could, what could be the worst situation if we pull out our cameras? <laughs> don't ask me that. Yeah, you don't understand, yeah, huh? no. still early here in Belgrade and we haven't really come across many fans yet. All we're really seeing is a lot, I mean a lot of riot police. However, it doesn't matter because for the first time on Derby Days, we're headed into the stadium early. Why? Because we have gained access like never before. We are closer to the action than we've ever been before. You are going to see Derby Days like you've never seen before. Loves to play in a game like that. It must be incredible as a football player to, to get to fans like that. Some tackles flying in there. That's one thing I've noticed. In England, we're not allowed pyros, you know, uh, no smoke, no fire. I think that adds to the atmosphere. Incredible, absolutely incredible. I'd love it if we could do that in England. I'd absolutely love it. Like I say, it just adds the atmosphere. Superb. Need to go to this game.
absolutely deafening. Well, where do I start with that one? I mean, usually we come out all excited telling you what just happened, but to be honest, it's the next day and I'm still drained from the adrenaline, <laughs> mentally and physically of being part of that match live. First and foremost, let's talk about the violent reputation that surrounds this derby and the fans. Totally unfounded, at least in our perspective. From the second we have got here, fans, management, even players have treated us like brothers. Uh, the way they treat fellow fans. You know, what you're saying there, my experience of, of going to Serbia, like I said earlier, meeting fans, meeting people, exactly the same. Just really, really great hospitality. Really nice people. So proud to show off their city and in particular their football and derby. It's just been exceptional. Kobanani and I have been around the world covering football, but never have we seen a celebration like Partizans with that last minute goal. They were with them, they were singing with them. It was beyond anything that we have experienced. But again, that's only half the story. Red Star. I mean, they went through two missed penalties, a final minute loss, but again, they, they didn't stop. At the end of the game, instead of booing, they made their players come over to them and they sang their love for them. The only negative element That's we great. saw was when a small, and I mean a very small element of the Red Star fans set fire to some seats in the Partizan Stadium. But that honestly paled in comparison to the celebration that was this match day. You can see why it is so special to the people of this city. Yes, they don't have the best football on the pitch, but football, as we've been saying, throughout this whole series is all about effort and boy, do they have something special. Well, what can I say? That atmosphere there with the, the pyrotechnics, the smoke, uh, the singing, uh, also the players after getting involved with the fans, it, it just looks like I say, right my street, I need to go to this game. This is number one on my list. I need to go to that game. Okay, well that's the end of the video. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also, leave a like, leave a comment. I'll read all the comments. Also, if you've got any ideas for future reaction videos, let me know and I'll look into it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.